Hello, it's Scott Manley here in Palm Springs, Southern California. I'm here because it is near to Joshua Tree, which is a national park where we've been running around climbing on rocks and trying to not to get dehydrated in the time that we have. But uh, I haven't had a place to record video because you know what? This pool area is usually full of really noisy, bad music. And now it's mostly full of people cleaning it up, which is great. It's also full of some really cool floaties sitting in the background there that the kids uh, have destroyed at least one of. Not my kids, but kids in general. Anyway, um, getting down here, we stopped at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory and I was very happy to get a tour there by none other than Doug Ellison who brought us to the clean room viewing area where we could see Mars, uh, NASA's next mission to Mars being assembled and ready for flight. Flight hardware. The rover is sitting there. We have the, uh, it has everything, but the chassis isn't, hasn't gone on properly yet. Or sorry, the wheels haven't gone on to the chassis. The cruise stage is mated to the re-entry stage. The re-entry stage with the sky crane is assembled and they have a dummy rover you know, block sitting in there so they can integrate everything. The heat shields there, so they've got pretty much all the hardware for they need for the mission in the clean room and it's now really a question of whether it passes all the tests and really becomes Mars 2020 or Mars delayed by two years. I'm hoping that it's going to be Mars 2020. Speaking of delays and times, uh, I'm going to say <laughs> Mike Pence coming along and saying that the NASA is going to land on the moon in like five years is quite a stretch. I'm not sure how how, how they plan to do this and apparently according to at least one article Mike Pence said that he only found out himself five minutes before announcing this venture so I think that you know, NASA and Jim Bridenstine's got you know some crack plan that they've put together and the question is can they get the budget for it what kind of budget does it need what is involved there are a lot of questions and I can't really speculate on it but what I can say is that yes the USA is probably the only country in the world that could put people on the moon in five years they have existing technology existing experience and you know the money and the resources China certainly has money and resources but they don't have all the background and everything that the, the US has having said that they may well end up in a race to the moon I'm not gonna speculate on that the other NASA news was the uh, spacewalk which yeah, was announced some time ago as being a dual, you know, two, first time that you would have two women in space working on an EVA. And I think they made an error announcing that early because of, cause after the first spacewalk with Anne McLean, she realized that she could not use the large spacesuit safely. So she was going to have to switch to a medium spacesuit. And that meant they had a medium and a large setup for the two uh, astronauts and yeah, they w had to swap out one of the women. So, of course, Christina Cook took the role instead because, hey, it's fair to split these tasks around. Um, and, and so, yeah, I mean, this is a thing that the EMUs, the spacesuits that are used by NASA, are getting on for 40 years old. They built a bunch of them, they've maintained them, and there aren't that many on the space station right now. And to be clear, they did have two medium spacesuits, but what you what you do is these things are modular. You assemble them. You start with a medium hard upper torso, and then you attach all the gear to it. It's kind of like the chassis that you attach all the bits and hardware and everything to. And it takes about 12 hours. So although they could have set up this spacewalk to have both women in space, it would have taken them 12 hours of work to assemble and test the suit. And then, of course, when they needed to switch back to another configuration, they would have taken another 12 hours. So that really is the root of the problem. It's not like there's some blame going around. The only blame I would say is announcing this, you know, hours and hours, or sorry, weeks and weeks ahead of time. Uh, so look, it's it's unfortunate, and the problem is, I just I think that they need more spacesuits. That's what they really need. They need new, better, more awesome spacesuits with you know extra bling. That's what I'm gonna say. Anyway, um, also elsewhere, showing off stuff for political reasons. India, they launched an anti-satellite system, destroying one of their small. 
uh, old weather satellites. I believe the old weather satellite was maybe about 700 kilograms. It was in a 300 kilometer polar orbit. And when it came up and approached the Indians, continent, whatever, it was shot out of the sky. And that is completely the wrong thing to say because when you shoot a satellite with another anti-satellite, it is not being shot out of the sky, it is being shot in the sky, and much of the debris will remain in the sky, traveling around the world at very, very high speeds, and it only takes relatively small chunks of this stuff to actually cause serious trouble. I believe AGI has put together a great little animation showing exactly what the debris cloud would look like. This is largely simulated. Satellite trackers around the world are trying to figure out where all the pieces are, make sure the big pieces get tracking status so that they can uh, track these things and make sure that they include include these into like future plans and stuff like this. But this is this is really bad. I mean, I'm going to say sure. What I've heard, and this is an interesting thing, that like, an interesting comparison between the U.S. and you know, space and politics is. I've, I've heard people say that India's had this ASAT capability since 2009, but it was never tested in orbit. And I've heard that this is a political demonstration to, like, you know, shore up the current administration. I, maybe I'm misreading this. I am not an expert on Indian politics by any means, so don't quote me on any of that go reading. What I am pretty sure of is that shooting a satellite in space and creating a cloud of debris which will haunt us for years to come is not the best way to be uh, to cooperate in space with other people. Yeah, I mean, yeah, sure the satellite was in a lower orbit than most, but when you impact that, it sends debris off in all sorts of directions. And it's quite easy for this hardware to possibly go up to higher orbits and hit satellites up there. Like, collisions are complex, they are chaotic. And some of the stuff, much of the stuff, will have fallen to Earth. But we'll be tracking this hardware for a long time to come, and hopefully it won't be responsible for any serious problems. So anyway, yeah, that's my update on my trip. I'm going to be driving home soon and I will be stopping at a very cool place in Mojave in a couple of days' time. So I'll get your report from that very soon. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.